What's up, party people? We've got about a minute and a half left. We'll give some people a few minutes to get on here. It is Christine Dunn, your conversion specialist based out of Naples, Florida. And I look forward to further connecting with you guys soon. Hang in there. All right, guys, it's Christine here with your conversion specialist here in Naples, Florida. Ooh, let me get this going here. Um, and I am so excited to be with you guys here today. It's three o'clock on Monday. I hope you guys have been crushing the phones this morning. And if you haven't, why not? Drop me in the chat where you are calling in from today so I can get a good feel for what's going on and where you guys are all in from. Also, you can only see the sync box right now, but don't worry, I'll be sharing my uh, screen with you here shortly. Did I see a Martin County? Oh my gosh, Ontario, Wisconsin, Houston, Georgia, all over the place. California, oh, I love it. Palm Springs, Denellen, not too far from me in Naples. Myrtle Beach, ah, Charleston is not too far south of you guys. I love it. Oh, I saw another Naples, Sarasota. So awesome. You guys, we are all over the country. And the beauty of sync is it does not matter where we are. The same things are succeeding all over the country and really all over the world almost. Maybe not the world, but the continent for sure, right? Because we've got a lot of Canadians up there crushing the phones and doing a great job. Wow, Hawaii. It's a little earlier there, no? I love it. We're, we're three o'clock on the East coast. So we're about to be, um, for any, for all of you calling in from the East coast, this is a really great primer for you to be hitting the phones come four o'clock. I love it because this really is what I do with my team in the mornings. We get on our call jams every morning. Uh, I'd like them to start at eight 30, but we actually start at about nine o'clock. We go through 15 minutes of role play and then we hit the phones. And I got to tell you guys, this is a game changer role playing and really using your words, right? How many of you drop it in the chat? Let me know how many of you are actually role playing now. I'm so curious. Are you role playing now? And if you are, let me know how many times a week you are role playing. Drop it in the chat. Let me see. I want to see what type five times a week. Yeah, Josh mm -hmm. is doing five times a week because he's on my team. He knows. Monday to Friday, every day. That's awesome, Kurt. You guys, this is huge. When you are practicing this often, it just becomes second nature. Okay, Hazel, that's okay. 30 minutes a week. All right, Laura, that's better than none. Better than none. And in even that 30 minutes a week, you can make such a difference. I mean, you guys, what you'll find is that even just a few minutes every day will make a huge difference. Twice a week. Awesome, Ashley. 
but really you guys, this should be a daily thing. If you think about if any of you, how many of you have kids once a week with your team for about 30 minutes? Okay. I like that Daria. That's better than none. How many of you have kids? Two kids. Yeah. Just drop in the chat. How many have kids? And I'm asking you this because if your kids came to you and said, Hey ma, I want to be a professional athlete. I want to be a professional swimmer. I want to be a professional football player or a lacrosse player or a soccer player, whatever professional athlete it was. Would you tell them, Oh, it's fine, honey. Just 30 minutes a week. You'll, you'll make it there. Mm -hmm. Do you think 30 minutes a week would make your kid a professional athlete? I know it's crazy when you start thinking of it like that, but the answer to that is obviously no, right, Hazel? So why are we selling ourselves short? We're telling our kids to do things and we're not even willing to do them ourselves. We've got to really step it up, give them something to, to, to go off of, right? Let me do a little screen share here. I just wanted you guys to think about that because the next time you tell your kids to do something, because it's going to make them better. Think about why you're not doing it, right? I mean, let's let's actually talk about that. Why are some of you not doing any role play right now? And it's okay if you're new. There's nothing. I'm not. I'm I'm calling you out because I want you to think of it differently, right? I'm not calling you out to make you feel bad. I just want you to think of this in a different light, so that when you don't feel like making the calls, you actually will make them because you're setting an example for your kids, right? All right, let's see if I can get this chat over here on the side so I can still see you guys, but still share this. Okay, six kids. Oh my goodness, six kids. Hazel, you got to close a lot of deals, huh? It's a lot of kids to take care of. Okay, congratulations though, that's amazing. So we're here, we're, we're really gonna, let me uh, do a, a actual play. So there we go. There we go. Now we're talking. Okay. So really you guys, we want to maximize our return on investments with sync, right? So a lot of you guys are, are probably making these calls already. And if you're not, um, I just, I just want to know, is it because you're uncomfortable? Why aren't you making the calls there? And why aren't you role-playing also? I didn't see any answers on why people are not role-playing. I'm curious about this. Drop it in the chat, guys. This is this is supposed to be us going back and forth and, and getting you comfortable being uncomfortable. But if I don't know where you are in your in your journey, it's going to be harder for me to help you. New to the game, okay, fair. And why are we not practicing our role playing? Okay, Ron, tell me you're making the calls, but why are you not role playing more? If you know that that would help you. Okay, somebody, Stacy says she needs scripts. Fair enough, love that. You need a partner to do it with? Okay, Laura. Well, I'm gonna call you out on that one because you don't need somebody to repeat the opening line. When I first started, I literally would just repeat the opening line over and over and over and over and over and over again. Sometimes it was when I was walking my dog. Sometimes it was when I was in my car and there was no one, instead of playing music, I would just say the opening line over and over and over again. And if you don't have the script or the opening line, then you can't do it, right? But once you have that, and you will today, so get ready to take pictures of this. And, and if you guys have not been to Sync U, you have got to come. You've got to come see us at Sync U. We'll get you all set up on all of our methods and systems and using the, the whole database in, to its fullest extent. But then we're also on the final day going to go through an entire day of conversion. And Hazel, yes, come to Summit also. If you've never been to one or the other, I would say if I had to choose one, I would definitely choose Think You. But the Summit is amazing. There's so much information that you can learn. We have a full conversion day there. So definitely, if you guys have not done this, you definitely want to come to Summit or Think You for sure. Um, Wesley, it looks like you, your team just started scheduling role plays on Wednesdays and she can or you can say you've all been improving more because of it. Absolutely. There is just no way to get better. You guys, if you're not practicing these professional athletes, don't just show up to play a game. 
I mean, nobody would watch them play if that were the case, right? I mean, we wouldn't all be tuning in for Monday Night Live football if it was a bunch of amateurs. That's just not the way it works, right? And what's interesting is when you think of it in that light, it probably helps you understand like, oh gosh, maybe I really should be role-playing more, right? And it does help you fix your mistakes when you're saying things out loud in front of your friends and in front of your peers and your teammates and your colleagues. And in the beginning, when you don't know what to say, you do need that script. And once you have the script, whether your colleagues or your peers are there or not, or your team is available or not, you guys can still be rolling through these, these opening lines for sure. Because if you can't even get the opening line out, then the conversation and what comes after that is really kind of a moot point because you won't even get to that point. So we're going to get comfortable being uncomfortable. But what makes something uncomfortable, you guys, is really just the fact that you're unfamiliar with it, right? You're unfamiliar with what to say. You're unfamiliar with the conversation once you get going. And the whole thing is just maybe new to you. Totally fine. You have to start somewhere, but you have to also acknowledge that in the beginning, you are going to be uncomfortable and you are going to be unfamiliar. But as soon as you start to spend time going over these and practicing this stuff, then you're going to get more comfortable and it's going to increase your conversion rates, right? Because your conversations are going to be better. And with better conversations, you have increased conversion. And that is why we are here for conversion training. So we kind of talked about these athletes before. Um, you guys, this is just a slide showing them all. They're all happy. They know that they worked hard, that they deserve everything that they're holding and they're excited, right? Tiger Woods didn't just like show up to, to swing his club and walk away with some of these awards that he's gotten and, and the green jackets and all the rest, right? Hazel said, I must say, since you told us last time to make the calls, hey, I'm such and such. Are you looking to make a move in the next few months or browsing? I did the whole thing and I was surprised at the responses. Even when they said they were browsing, I have appointments. I have almost seven people I'm working with. Yes, Hazel, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing because I did not pay Hazel to say that. And I just want everyone to know that when you do follow these scripts, we have almost 10,000 agents that have gone through our stink you at some point or another. And you guys, they are all using these scripts. So let's keep going. Your face could be right there. The five keys to winning the game before it starts, you got to know why you're calling. And actually, I don't want to go through this part right now. I actually want to show you guys this because can I make this stop and pause just because he's funny. I want you guys to think about this today. Um, we, we actually went through this on a leadership call that I was on and it was called grow and it's actually effective coaching of conversations. And I wanna share with you what each of these letters kind of stands for. And I want you to think about them before you're making your calls. Michael Glosser is saying, we're finding the speed to lead response rate pretty unreal, it's great. Yes, are you using, um, I'm curious on that before I jump into this grow uh, effective coaching. Michael, are you guys using Switchboard Sarah or are you using the pond to just to dump everything into the pond? Just out of curiosity. Okay, so for the grow, the effective coaching conversations, you guys, G, this is probably a good writer downer. G is your goal, right? As an agent, what is your goal that you wanna achieve during that call session? What is, the, what is the goal of what you want to achieve during that call section? I love that it's the auto tracks, Michael. When you use it, it does work. And AI does work as well. And you no pond at all. That's amazing. Okay. Yes, the, the, the pond, um, Ron, yes, we did start. We started it right promptly at three o'clock. Um, so, so the first, you know, what, do, what is it that you're trying to achieve with these calls? You want to get appointments, right? And how are we going to get appointments? We're going to get appointments based on our conversations, but we can't have a conversation if we can't get past the opening line. So the appointments, how many appointments, right? How many appointments are we going to, so I want you to think of some of these things before you start getting into your calls, because when you start thinking about something prior to going into it, it sets your intention. When you set the attention, your subconscious can start to work for you. Your subconscious can work for you when you're making these calls. But if you don't set the intention on what it is that you want to achieve, 
then it's going to be a little bit harder. You might not quite have the same um, response as somebody who might have set their goals prior to. The R for this grow is reality. What does your current situation look like? What does your current situation look like? If you were to close two more deals a month, you guys, is that going to change your life? If you were going to close two more deals a month, drop it in the chat. Drop me like a fist bump or something if that would change your life, right? It would change your life, right? To close two deals a month. Some of you might be closing more than that already. But even if you're not, if you're not closing any right now, closing one a month would probably be big. If you close two a month, that would be huge. So if you're going into these calls without an intention and you're not really thinking about your reality of where you are right now and what your current situation looks like, then what is your motivation to actually make these calls, right? Have you actually thought about the numbers? If you could set five appointments a week, if you could make five, if you could set five appointments a week, that would be about 20 appointments a month, right? And if you had 20 appointments a month, do you think that you could at least close two of those two deals a month? I mean, that's, that's, that's doable. When you do the numbers like that, that starts to make more sense. Then it gets a little more exciting to make the calls, right? All right. So for our O, what is your opportunity or your alternative option if you're not going to make the calls? How else are you going to get two deals a month? Just curious. Drop it in the chat. How else are you going to get two deals a month if you're not willing to make the calls? If you're not willing to take advantage of this opportunity that either your team leader offered you or maybe it's your own platform, how else are you going to get those two deals a month if you're not willing to make the calls? Which really just goes down to the W, which is will. Will you actually do whatever it takes to change your current situation? And for all intents and purposes, the current situation is that you're not closing two deals a month. So are you willing to do what it takes to change your current situation and close two deals a month? Because I know that each of you can do it. There's no reason why you can't. So what, drop in the chat for me, what would you like to achieve in today's session? Like what is the most important thing that you would like to work on today? Push the wrong button here. How to speak to leads over the phone. Perfect. More appointments. Love it. Motivation and grow. Yes. How to talk to the seller leads. One appointment per dial session. Love it, Kurt. Conversion scripts, more appointments. Awesome. Well, conversion and conversations and more appointments, they all come from our script, right? How many calls do you have to make to get five appointments per week? Winnie, great question. That's going to depend on each person and what your conversation skills are like on the phone, right? I might have one agent that only has to make 15 calls to get five appointments. And I might have another agent that it might take 400 calls, right? Ultimately, if it's taking you 400 calls, then we need way more role play and that's fine. But to, to be honest with you, that five appointments, it could be anywhere from, I mean, it could, it really is going to vary. I'm not even going to give a number because it varies from, from each person. For instance, one of the agents on my team this morning, he made three appointments this morning on a Monday, right? On a Monday, he made three appointments. So he's already got three and it's only Monday. Now, when he makes five, does that mean he's done for the week? Not necessarily, but if he did want to, he technically could because he hit the minimum. But knowing him, he's going to shoot for 10 probably. Okay, Emmanuel, you mentioned uh, that you don't leave voicemails now, but you'd like to. Well, I'm going to tell you that we're not going to leave voicemails at all. Like I said, when we started this, over 10,000 agents have gone through this training and they are not leaving voicemails. So we are not going to be leaving voicemails. The scripts um, can be printed out. I believe if you go to um, the help button on the top of your um, 
browser, once you log into your website, if you go into help and then you look up scripts, then there's all the scripts that will come up right there. Okay, so your opening line is your no most important thing. But before we go into the opening line, I'm going to give you seven things not to do. Seven things not to do, okay? Because when you're going into battle, would you rather me tell you, don't step here so that you can walk around that landmine? Wouldn't that be helpful to know not what not to do? so that you can save yourself <laughs> from the mistakes that so many of us have made and you won't have to do that. Uh, Mercedes, so clearly you don't advise on leaving voicemails to the ones we have not talked to. That is correct, Mercedes. Thank you for clarifying. Okay, so to go into the battle, there are seven things that we are not going to do. Okay, you guys, we are not going to say, how are you doing? Or respond with any phrase that is even similar to that. Does anyone know why we're not going to do that? Does anybody want to attempt to share why we aren't going to do that? Oh, time suck. Yes. Telemarketer. True. Gives them an out. Exactly. It gives them an out. Also, what if it's like the worst day of their life? How are you going to overcome that? And not to mention, they already think that you they don't, they don't know you. So they definitely don't think that you can help them. So do not ask them how they are doing Two, do not introduce yourself with your company's brokerage name. Just, just take a wild guess on maybe why you don't want to introduce yourself with your company brokerage name. I want to see what you guys might say. <laughs> because there's a lot sales call. The biggest reason that we don't want to introduce ourselves, you guys, yes, they definitely have um, signed up on multiple websites, but also your brokerage name is irrelevant, but more importantly, what if they had a bad experience with someone else from your same brokerage? Oh, then how are you going to crawl out of that one? You don't even get a chance to have a conversation because they already are blocking you mentally because they had a bad experience with someone else from your brokerage that had nothing to do with you, right? So just don't introduce yourself with your company brokerage or name. At some point they may ask, but honestly, most people don't care and they probably won't ask. You're right, Terry. They don't care. Most of them don't. Number three, do not say their name. Any guesses on why we're not going to say their name? <laughs> I'm just curious. Why do you guys think that we wouldn't want to say their name? Yes, you could definitely say it wrong, Richard. There's some crazy names out there. A spy, stalker, telemarketing. No, you have the wrong number. Yes, Jen, love that. You don't know them, right? Right, Kalisha. You guys, and if someone else answers, exactly. How many people, so many people are registering under their spouse's names and then you don't even, you, you know, then then when you say the wrong spouse and they're like, oh, I didn't register and then, then they automatically know that it's something crazy, right? Could be a fake name, totally. But ultimately it's kind of irrelevant anyway, because what if, it, what if you say the wrong name, but this person also is looking to buy? I mean, who knows, right? So don't say their name because it, it just, it gives them a, a, an out and we don't want to give them any more outs than they're already going to come up with. Do not say their name. Number four. Do not say, I saw you registered or signed up on my site. Anybody watch Big Brother? <laughs> it's at the end of the show right now. I think there's only a couple of episodes left. I didn't get to watch the one from last night, but that's totally Big Brother-ish to be like, oh yeah, I saw you registered on my site. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't say, I saw you registered. You're going to see how we kind of get around that and kind of say it without saying it like that. But don't say, I saw you registered or signed up on my site. It is totally Big Brother and not like the show. <laughs> not like the show. I am curious though, if you are watching Big Brother right now, who do you think is going to win? Just curious. <laughs> All right. Number five. <laughs> it's okay, Sherry. It's totally normal. A lot of people are, whether they're saying it or not, they are also, um, you know, probably doing a lot of these. Oop. Number five. Do not say, is there anything I can help you with? You guys, they don't think you can help them, but more importantly, they don't know you, right? 
people really believe like I think it's 86% of buyers don't think their realtor understands them or understands their problem. So if 86% of the people that you're calling don't think that there's anything you can help them with, you haven't added any value yet, right? So there's really no reason to say, is there anything I can help you with? Because they already think the answer to that is no. Also, it's a yes or no question, which we don't like. Because when you ask a yes or no question, then you hit a dead end and it's harder to keep the conversation going. Would you agree? Yeah. All right, number six. Do not come in with an assumption of the lead. You guys, how many of you look at the leads before you call them and then you're like, oh man, it's only a $150,000 lead or $95,000 lead. I'm not gonna call that guy. How many of you have done that? You don't, you were, everybody's guilty at some point. You don't have to hide it from me. I know. I was even guilty at one point from doing that, right? Totally. But the reality is, you guys, these buyers, what if that's an investor? What exactly, Kurt? You nailed it. They could they could be buying like 15 of those. And then you get 15 of those in a year because you you made a relationship with one buyer that you didn't assume was not really legit, right? Don't also another thing not to assume, you guys, don't assume that everyone is getting financing. Don't assume that. So anytime you're you're having a conversation with people, you want to ask them when it gets when it's appropriate. Will you be being, will you be paying cash or, or financing? You've got to start with the cash because if they're a cash buyer and you start with financing and you just assume that they're financing, then they might be offended. But if they're cat or if they are getting financing and you say cash first, they'll quickly, quickly um, correct you and let you know that, oh, no, 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 I'll be getting a mortgage, right? And Kurt's right. They could be a buyer or a seller. So don't make an assumption of the lead. And the final seventh deadly sin is do not get in a fight on the phone. Some of you might be laughing like, what do you mean? How would I get in a fight with somebody on the phone? But you guys, there are some crazy conversations out there. And I know some of you at some point have probably had somebody tell you, well, I'm not interested because I don't know, you know, when the market's going to turn around or the market's going to crash and the rates are too high. So I'm going to wait for everything to go down. I'm sure you guys have been getting some of those conversations and it's really easy to start trying to convince them and change their minds, right? But the reality is, is you're not going to change their mind. You're not even close to going to be able to change their mind because they believe what they believe, just like you believe what you believe. <laughs> Good job, Sherry. I'm glad. I'm glad you at least found one of the seven that you're not guilty of doing. But at some point, we've all said some of these. And these are some landlines that we just want to make you guys aware of so that you don't do these, right? And just so it's so much easier for you to have a good conversation. So let's jump into what the actual opening line is. And for some reason, I'm trying to move this. So hold on one second. I have this chat box here and I can't figure out how to move it. Let me move this down here and then reshare. Maybe. Boop. Now this thing's in my way. I'm so grateful you guys are so patient. <laughs> I am not the most um, tech savvy person. And I've even practiced with other people and they were trying to help me. And I still kind of mess this up sometimes. So uh, let me put this little chat bar thing somewhere else. All right. Go back to our play. Okay. So Steve obviously had this slide and I have to adjust it, but this is kind of what we would say, you guys, no worries, Stacy. Good luck on your appointment. Thanks for coming. Okay. So, Hey, this is Steve with the home search site. I noticed you were looking over in Toronto at some homes. So just curious, are you looking to make a move in the next few months? Or are you just browsing you guys, anybody can read this off of the page, right? Anybody can read it. Hey, this is Steve with the home search site. I noticed you were looking at some homes over in Toronto. Just curious, are you looking to make a move in the next few months or are you just browsing? I want each of you to kind of read it to yourselves, read it to yourselves, and then read it again. 
when you read these, you guys, when you're practicing, I want you to say it out loud. There's a lot of things that you can do in your head. This is not one of them. You need to hear what you sound like, not what you think you sound like. So in the beginning, I literally would practice this over and over and over again. Like I said, walking around my house, walking my dog, maybe I'm in the shower, maybe I'm at the gym, maybe I'm in my car dropping somebody, you know, if I had a kid dropping the kid off at school and then, you know, saying it out loud there, my husband would be laughing at me thinking, why are you walking around the house saying the same thing over and over again? But what I can tell you is that by repetitive, like that constant repetition, it made it one so that no matter what the person on the other end of the phone sounded like, I would just immediately go into what it was I was going to say. I would just immediately go into the opening line. How many of you, drop it in the chat, are you standing up when you make calls or are you sitting down? Just curious. How many of you are standing up, both sitting, hard stop to start dialing? Awesome, no problem both sitting, standing, sitting, standing. Okay. And those of you that are sitting, I would encourage you even right now, if you're just listening, if you're not, if you're in a place where you can actually stand, I would ask you to stand. I want you to stand up because I want you to feel the difference. Automatically, if you stand and you put your hands on your hips, do you feel different than when you were sitting? You want to come from a place where you feel confident and powerful. So you've already practiced the first, you know, the, the opening line. Yes, Laura, you feel strong. You have more energy. Totally. You feel completely different when you're standing up. So if you are used to sitting down to make your calls, throw in your headphones and start standing up. Maybe even do it in your kitchen or wherever you need a countertop that's high enough. Maybe even like I've done before in my office because I don't have one of those fancy desks that goes up and down. I actually just grab some books and put my computer on top of the book so that I can stand up. Or I just keep the computer on the desk and just kind of walk around my office until I need to go back to the computer and put my notes in. But you guys, standing up really does give you a big kind of leg up, especially in those moments where you might start to be getting like tired and you notice you're all hunched over. Just go ahead and stand up, shake it out a little bit, maybe pause it for a second, say it, say the opening line a couple more times, and then hit hit the next dial, right? You have a stand-up desk and a lighted mirror to one side. So you're smiling when you call. I love that. I actually have this Penergy um, thing that I do. And I if it and you guys can do this if you want. It's kind of a fun exercise. Just take your pen and put it in between your teeth, but don't let your lips touch it. Um, I wish that I was sharing my screen right now because it would make you laugh. Um, but yeah, put a pen between your teeth and just don't let your lips, and we're just going to count back 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Take the pen out of your mouth. Are you smiling? Drop it in the chat. Are you smiling? The Penergy thing works so good. It makes you smile, Laura, and it's fine if you're smiling at yourself. Kurt, I love that you put a mirror in front of you because you can see how your face looks when you're talking. That makes such a big difference because if you're smiling, like, can you guys tell I'm smiling right now? I bet you can, because it's, I pretty much do everything with a smile on my face, especially when I'm doing a presentation or I'm, or I'm calling someone, it makes such a big difference. You can hear it in my voice because it's real, right? I love that. <laughs> Josh can confirm that I smile in almost everything. So definitely you guys want to be smiling. And that Penergy thing, that does work. If you are just not feeling up to smiling, do the Penergy trick, the Penergy exercise, and then stand up to make your calls. And I think it's going to just blow you out of the world, out of the water. You're going to be really surprised at how that works for you. So our opening line is, Hey, this is Christine with the home search site. I noticed you were looking at some homes over in Toronto and I'm just curious, are you looking to make a move in the next few months or are you just browsing? Now notice we are saying homes. We're not saying houses. We're talking to, we're talking to buyers. We want to create an emotional connection. So we say homes. Okay. So that's the first thing I want you to notice about what we're saying in this opening line. I'm saying homes instead of houses. I'm not saying properties. I'm not saying units. I'm not saying any other anything else. I'm literally saying homes because homes are what buyers are searching for, right? 
If we're talking to sellers, we probably would want to say houses or property is okay. But when we're talking to buyers, we really want to pull on those heartstrings and we want to say homes. The other thing is I'm saying who I am. Hey, this is Christine with your home search site. Why am I not saying which home search site it is? I think some of you guys said this before in the call, but I'm just curious why, if, if any of you know why I'm not saying which specific home search site. Yes, Laura, they look on a lot of different websites. So it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. And they don't know which, they don't know who's from who anywhere anyway, right? So it really doesn't matter what site you're calling from. And then remember earlier I said, don't say I saw you were looking online. We kind of are saying that, but we're not saying it so creepy, right? We're not saying it so creepy. We're saying, hey, I noticed you were looking over in the Tor Toronto area at some homes. I'm not saying I saw you do this. I saw you registered. I just, I noticed you were looking at some homes in the Toronto area. And then I'm adding some curiosity because really I want to have a conversation. And the most interesting people are interested. They're interested. So if you find yourself doing all of the talking during your call times, red flag. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen some of those memes, the red flag memes. That is a red flag. If you're doing all the talking, it's a red flag because you really need to be hearing what the buyer wants. We need to learn about the buyer. And if you're doing all the talking, if you're not curious, if you're not being interested, then you're not going to get the information that you want. And it's not going to turn into a conversion. The other thing is I'm giving them an AB choice immediately off the bat. Are you looking to make a move in the next few months or are you just browsing? We know the answer to this question, right? We know the answer to the question. The question is they're going to, or the answer is they're going to say they're just browsing unless they really are looking like right now. And every once in a while you do get, get those also. Yes, Michael, you're right. Shut up and listen. <laughs> but then you also have to listen to understand, right? Not just listen to reply. So, Hey, this is Christine with the home search site. I noticed you were looking over in the Toronto area at some homes and I'm just curious, are you looking to make a move in the next few months or are you just browsing? Can you tell a difference? I'm still reading it. I'm not really reading it because I already know what it says. But for those of you who are just reading it for the first time and who heard me read it the first time today, and now I've said it a few more times, can you tell the difference? Michael, you called me out. Can you tell if I'm standing or sitting? What do you think? Michael asked me if I was standing. How many of you think I'm standing right now? Two sitting, one standing. I'm going to be straight up. I'm going to be so honest with you guys. I am totally sitting down right now. <laughs> but only because I... I'm in my office and I'm sitting up really straight. Thanks for calling me out, <laughs> Michael. Um, and I, and my headphones are dead. So I didn't want to be too far from the computer. And yeah, so I am, I am sitting and I do actually sit quite a bit um, when I'm making calls because usually I'm in the car driving for some reason, when I'm in the car driving, I have better conversations. And I think it's because I'm not in my head. I don't, I don't know if any of you guys want to try that. I don't know if you're allowed to, to talk on the phone when you're driving in the state that you're in. So be careful, of course, obviously. But it is really important for you guys to kind of play with both, right? You are totally worthy of me standing. That's not even very nice. But sometimes you can't always stand. And I wanted to make sure you guys could hear me good. So, hey, this is Christine with the Home Search site. I noticed you were looking over in Toronto at some homes. And I'm just curious. Are you looking to make a move in the next few months or are you just browsing? You know that the person is going to say just browsing. Um, if I push the button, there we go. Just browsing. That's what they're going to say. What would you say next? What would you say next when they say just browsing? I know this is like a, a place. This is a sticking point for a lot of people. So I want you guys to share with me what happens when somebody says just browsing. Josh, don't answer. I know you know it. Yes, Mary. 
Perfect. That's what the site is set up for. Exactly. Perfect. Great. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Nathan, you can ask what area, but first acknowledge what they said, right? First, we want to acknowledge what they said. Perfect. That's exactly what this site is for. While I have you, what's prompting you to browse? Love it. You guys are nailing it. I love that. Here's the thing too, I want you guys to realize when I say that opening line, it's not verbatim. Some of you are not going to say, hey, some of you say hello. When I like to make my calls in the morning, I like to say good morning. Hey, good morning. This is Christine with the Home Search site. I noticed you were looking over at some homes in the Toronto area. And I was just curious, you know, are you thinking of making a move in the next few months or are you just browsing? You guys want this to sound like you. It's you that you want them to work with. You don't want to pretend to be somebody else or say it in a way that is not comfortable to you because it's going to sound scripted when you're trying to use someone else's words. So I want you to stick to this as closely as possible, but I also want you to really use your words. If you wouldn't say perfect, don't say perfect. Say whatever it is that you would normally say. Great. Love that, Bailey. Great. That's what our site is for. What prompted you to browse? Perfect. Simple. Awesome. I say awesome sometimes too, Renee. I really like awesome also. It just depends on, on who you are, right? But you're acknowledging what they're saying and then you're going with it. Joni, I always say pillow picking and tire kicking. <laughs> I don't know that one. You have to tell me more about that. Um, but so this is what you're going to do. Perfect. That's exactly what the site is for. While I have you, what's prompting you to browse? Now they're more likely to start opening up, right? They're going to start telling you, oh yeah, you know, at least in my area, I'm, I'm a secondary. Um, oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Instead of browsing, that's what you say. I don't, does everybody know what that means? Cause I didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, that's the thing is you can say whatever it is that's normal to you. And then it might even catch some people off guard to say something a little bit off like that pillow picking and tire kicking, because then now you can have a whole nother easy conversation with somebody just based on how you made them giggle about something that, that you just said that was unusual. Right. So that's good. I have heard tire kick, tire kickers, but I just had never heard it in that particular, um, verbiage. So I love that. But you guys, do you think that you could say this opening line now that you know it, right? You could totally say that. And then when they say just browsing, perfect. That's exactly what the site is for. While I have you, what's prompting you to browse? The thing about that is now they're going to start telling you. So what I started to say this in my market, we have a lot of people that are second home buyer. So they don't really have to buy, right? Which that can be frustrating sometimes because they're not looking right now, but they are the ones that are going to build up my pipeline. So again, I'm not assuming that they're not going to buy now or that they're, that they're moving from out of the area, but a lot of them are. So when they say that they're just browsing, a lot of them really are just browsing, but that's exactly what the site is for. While I have you, what's prompting you to browse? And then they tell me that they're looking for a second home. What would you say if somebody said, oh, I'm, I'm just looking for, you know, I want to be a snowbird. So I'm just looking for, you know, a second home. I'm not going to be there full time. I'm just going to be there part time. What would some of your responses be? Of course, I'm going to find out a little bit more information from, from yes, Joni, totally. Fantastic. That's so exciting. And then what? Tell me more. Can you tell me more about that? Yes, Richard, you were totally on point. Can you tell me what that looks like for you? And then they'll tell you, oh, you know, we're only going to be here part time. We're going to be here for six months and a day because we want our taxes um, to be based out of Florida because we don't have a state tax in case any of you did not know that. And then they'll go on and they'll start telling you more about what they might be looking for. But if you guys can't get this opening line out, the chances of you having a good conversation are gonna be a lot less. But if you can have these conversations, then you can increase your conversion. You will increase your income. You will totally increase your income.
Yes, Michael, you want to get them talking about themselves. So when I have someone say that they're coming here, they're going to be from out of town, they'll tell me a little bit about what they might be looking for. And then I always like to ask them, so tell me, what is it that you see yourself doing while you're here? You guys do not want to be order takers. You don't want to be an order taker. They're not at a restaurant. They're looking for homes. You don't, you just, you want to ask them about them, get into a conversation. Oh, oh, so, so they might say, oh, you know what? We just are so excited to be enjoying the weather there. We want to be eating outdoors everywhere we go. We want to be going to the beach every day. My wife loves tennis, right? Build that rapport. Oh, I'm, I'm looking forward to golfing every day, whatever it is. And then you can, and then you can, oh, tell me more about the golf. Do you, do you think you might want to be in a community that, that you have access to golf every day, right? I like, I have pets. So I always like to ask people about their pets, right? Will you be bringing any, any fur, fur babies along with you? Wesley Ford, family, occupation, dreams, recreation. I like that. I like that. There we go. Um, that's super exciting. But what's the D? Oh, dreams. You just put it out of out of order. Family occupation, recreation, dreams then. Okay, yes, I love that. Right? What brings you to Houston when they start that conversation? Yes, Stacy, because what if somebody's relocating, right? Then they don't know anything about the area. But you don't want to start blasting them about what you know about the area. You want to find out what they might be interested in and why they're coming here. Are they going to be here full time? Is their family going to be coming with them? Are they going to be bringing their pets, right? Do they, what do they like to do in their free time? Will they be working from home or do they have an office that they're going to be working from? But here's the other thing about these conversations is you don't want to be asking them all of these questions. You don't want to be asking them all at the same time, right? You want to, if you are going to ask a question, ask it one at a time, one at a time. And if you are going to, Try and give them an A, B questions. But if you've got somebody who's really chatty, just let them talk. Find out everything you can about it. And then sometimes even restate what they've said so that they hear that you're hearing and understanding what they're telling you, right? So if, so if somebody called me and said, yeah, you know, we're going to be relocating. We're looking just for something small, maybe two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and we are going to be bringing our dog. Oh, tell me about your dog. Tell me a little more about your dog. Does it travel everywhere with you? Maybe whatever it is, write everything down. Yes, Wesley, write it all down. If they'll give you the dog's name, definitely ask that. I always ask if it's a big dog or a small dog. A lot of times that's a great opportunity for education, you guys, especially in my area specifically, because if someone just told me that they're looking to just be here for the season, which for us is January through April, if you're talking about just coming here for the season and you're going to be here and you want to have a golf community, a two bedroom, two bath condo, or if they said that they wanted to be on the beach for a two bed, two bath condo, but that they had a dog, you guys, I already know that I'm going to be adding value to this person because the majority of condos along the beaches here don't allow dogs, especially if it's a large dog. So already I can say, oh, I have a dog also that I take everywhere. I can kind of relate to them on that. It's really unique um, thing maybe in my market that we actually, most of the condos along the beach really don't allow dogs. And you probably don't want to get that into the very first conversation, but if there's a way for you to work it out in and not make it a negative, you're adding value. You're hearing what they're saying and you're sharing with them what you know about the market, but hey, all of the, you know, oh, it's great that you're bringing your dog. Everything down here is super dog friendly. You can take your dog to just about any restaurant. There's outdoor seating everywhere, all the things, right? If they say it to you, it's important to them. Don't just put seems nice in the notes. Agreed, Richard. If you guys are going to be making these conversations, making these calls, having these conversions or conversations, and then creating these conversions and actually working with these people, you have to remember that they're people that they're not just a transaction and that you need to be connecting with them as such, right? You need to figure out, are they gonna be coming alone? Is there anybody that's gonna be making the decision with them? Are they gonna be bringing anybody with them? Do they know people in the area already, right? Have they been here before or have they never, are they coming in blind? 
There's so many different questions and ways to have a conversation with somebody. But ultimately, this initial conversation is not to get everything. It's to get just enough so that you can set an appointment. When I say set an appointment, what do you think that looks like? What is setting an appointment to you? I'm just curious. Drop in the chat. What is setting an appointment to you? There are four different ways to communicate with people, right? Does, every, does anybody know the four things? I'm asking you too many questions at once. What are the four ways of communicating? You can call, you can text, you can email, or in-person slash Zoom. Right? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> smoke signal, whatever it takes. All right. So we know the four calls, text, email, in person, or a Zoom meeting. Those are the four types of communication. Which one do you think is actually the most important? Which one will have the highest conversion rate? In person, absolutely. In person, in person, in person, in person, absolutely. Now, here's the thing. I mentioned to you guys that a lot of the people in my market are coming from other places. It's going to be hard for me to have an in person. The next best thing is a Zoom. A Zoom is just as good as an in person. Why? At least they are seeing that you are a real person. You still have an opportunity to connect with them. You can see their face. They can see you. And you guys, I use a lot of video emails because I really feel like a lot of people hate video. And I just feel like if I can not be afraid of it and send out videos to people, they are more likely to use me. And I can tell you that it works. So, you know, Zoom is important. I had a guy tell me this morning, hey, I got your video email this morning. And I love that. Mercedes, we can do video email right in sync. It's awesome. You can do it right in your sync platform. Um, and so I sent a video email this morning and the guy, uh, I hadn't, I hadn't actually spoken to him because I couldn't get him on the phone. And when I did get him on the phone, <clears throat> he had just, excuse me, he had just watched it. And he was like, that was so cool. It was so, it's so much easier to talk to you now because I feel like I already saw you. It's so interesting. Um, Jesse, it might be, I'm sorry to tease you guys with that. If so. Um, but you can talk to your account manager or your office manager or whoever's in charge of your platform and ask them about the video. The video is a really great way to connect with people. So um, we've got about 10 minutes left. I want to open it up to you guys. Do you have questions that you want to ask? Do you have any concerns? Do you have, do you feel confident that you could use this script and do your calls? Because we're coming up on four o'clock Eastern time. This is a great time to hit the phones. No, Wesley, why would you want to lie? Then you have to remember what you told them. You don't want to lie. Don't lie. How do you best approach seller leads? Okay, Riley, love that. All right, so do you have people that are coming in from um, like home valuations? What are they coming in from? Because what I love about the seller leads is it is very similar to what our opening line is for the buyers. It's just a little bit tweaked. And so let me see if I can do this. Um, it's been a while since I've called some seller leads. Hey, this is Christine with your home valuation site. I noticed you were curious about your home's value. And I'm just wondering, are you looking to make a move in the next few months or are you just getting started in the process? I usually will say something similar to that. Hey, this is Christine with the home search site. I noticed you were curious about your home's value. Are you looking to make a move in the next few months or are you just getting started in the process? That's kind of what I will say to sellers. You want to keep it as close to the opening line as possible. And that way you don't have to keep tweaking things and, and changing things around. How do you bring up making an appointment in the conversation? Oh, Jordan, great question. So the conversation goes, so you start learning things, um, different things about the person, right? And they tell you, and now you're trying to set an appointment, right? And so the next, you literally just say, hey, you know what? The next step is 
to just go ahead and set an appointment. We'll just take, we're going to talk about our win strategy. It'll take about 10, 15 minutes. We'll set up a Zoom or if, you, if you're in town, we'll, we'll set up an in-person appointment and we'll just meet and talk about some different properties. I'll bring some properties that I've pulled up specifically based on our conversation today. We'll kind of take a look at those, see if any of those are on, on the right track. And then we'll make sure that we have a plan, right? I want to give you clarity that I'm the best person to help you purchase the right property at the right time. Does that make sense? Most people are going to say, oh, okay, that's just the next step. You don't really ask. You just literally say, oh, you know what? The next step is for us to just hop on a quick Zoom or an in-person meeting. And we're just going to talk about our win strategy and what it takes to get you into a property. And, you know, would you like to do it on Tuesday or Friday? They might say Tuesday or they might say Friday or they might throw out a different day, whatever day it is. And you say, okay, great. Do you prefer morning or afternoon? Afternoon. Okay, great. So Friday afternoon, would you say maybe three o'clock? Three o'clock is great. Then I want to confirm it with them. Do they use a calendar? Do you use a calendar? They might say yes. Awesome. Do you prefer email or text? Oh, I prefer email. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and send you that calendar invite for Friday at three o'clock. What is your best email? Why am I asking them what is their best email? I'm asking them that because what if they gave me their garbage email when they registered and they don't really check that one, but now we've built a rapport. Also, the, the email address that is linked to their calendar might also be different right? It might be different than the one that they registered with. So I'm going to let them tell me what their email address is. And then I'm going to go ahead and send it right then. And I'm going to say, okay, I just sent it your way. Can you confirm that you received it? Yes, I got it. Okay, great. Go ahead and accept that for me. Okay. They accept it. And the final thing that I'll say is awesome. Okay. Can you just do me one more favor in the event that anything changes between now and Friday at three o'clock, would you just let me know? And they always say yes, right? Because now they're smiling and you're smiling and everyone's excited about this win strategy that you're going to talk about. And it's just the next step. You're not asking them, hey, would you like to meet next? You're literally just after, at, when you're in the conversation, when it feels right, and you've got enough information from them. Hey, you know what? I've got some really great information from you today. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I look forward to our next meeting. And the next step is actually for us to just go ahead and set up an appointment. We can, we can do it in person or just a 10, 15 minute Zoom. That way we can talk about our win strategy and make sure that you understand what the process moving forward is going to look like. That's it. Once you do that, you get on to the next one. Now, this might take you 15, 20 minutes in the beginning, but as you start getting better with this, you'll be able to do this in five to seven minutes. The idea is to use your call time to set appointments and use your appointment time to get deeper into those conversations and really build those relationships. Because again, these are people that you're working with. They are people. This is not a transaction. When you think of each person as a transaction, you're going to be having a hard time in real estate for the, in, for the long run. You've got to treat these people like people because if you get one buyer that really loves you, you could end up getting all their cousins and their family and their friends that are also relocating. You'll be opened up to their entire network just by treating that one person really well. What is the win strategy? Lois, that could be anything. It's really just what you are going to be doing um, to set yourself apart, maybe from other agents. It's really just uh, whatever it is that you would do for them, right? And, and they don't need to know exactly, you know, break down and maybe they ask you what the win strategy is, but when you get there, you're really just gonna be telling them, hey, you know what? So I just wanna learn a little bit more about you and then regurgitate back to them a lot of the things that they told you about, right? So that they remember, so that they know that you heard them that you understood what they were saying, that you understand what they're looking for moving forward. Have a few properties picked out for them based on the conversation, Lois. Have a few properties picked out and go over those with them on the Zoom, screen share. Do whatever it takes, <clears throat> excuse me, to make sure that they understand that part of what you're doing is, is you're educating them on the, the current market. You're showing them what's currently available. Is this what you had in mind, right? Awesome.
Did I miss anyone else's questions that might have had one that wanted to ask? We just have a couple of minutes left before we close out here. All right, you guys. Well, I'm so grateful that you were all here. I'm so glad. I hope this really helps. Yes, Michael, you can use that Penergy trick. I would love for you to use that. Make sure you shout me out if you do. Tell them where you got it. Can I quickly show a video? Um, I don't have any videos to show today, Ron, but if you want to shoot a message to, uh, I think it's trainings, trainers at uh, syncpro.com, or you can send it to me, Christine dot done at syncpro.com. Send me whatever questions you have. I'd be happy to share those with you guys. If you guys are not signed up for a sync you, please sign up for a sync you. We would love to have you at Summit. We're going to have one of the biggest Halloween parties ever. They are so fun. If you've never been to one, I really encourage you to go. It is in Atlanta. The Summit is in Atlanta. <clears throat> And it is going to be awesome. We'll have a full day of conversion training there. Also, thank you again for being here. Make it a great week, you guys. And <laughs> search for my wig. Norman, I can't wait to see your wig. I want to meet all of you in person. I'm looking forward to it. Have a great rest of your week and I will talk to you soon.